All right, Giants Nation, welcome to the Shit That New York Giants Fans Say, Episode 6. So, this first comment is about J.J. McCarthy. Someone said that we should draft J.J. McCarthy because we really need a quarterback. That's been the talk for ever since Daniel Jones was sucking this previous season. We need a quarterback. We need one now. However, this commenter, he's making sense. He basically says, will any new quarterback make a difference without a number one wide receiver to throw to? It's not just about Jones. Whatever QB we have needs weapons. I'm sorry to tell you guys this, but with Saquon Barkley gone, you no longer have a weapon. Wandell is not a weapon. Hyatt is not a weapon. So I don't care how open he is. If you don't have an offensive line, and now if you don't have a, a, a wide receiver one, because Wandell is not a wide receiver one, I'm not really expecting much from Hyatt. Like I know you guys claim that you have faith in Hyatt and Wandell and that they're actually really good wide receivers. They just need a quarterback, but I think it's a little bit more than that. I think they need a wide receiver one. So I agree with this guy. We need a weapon and it will be great to have a wide receiver one and not have your best pass catcher slash player be Saquon Barkley because that's what has been the entire Daniel Jones era. And I hate to say it like that because I know a lot of you guys are upset with Daniel Jones and you want him gone. But I keep telling you guys, you paid Daniel Jones already. You can't cut Daniel Jones this year. You can cut him next March. There is a chance that he's going to play some games because as it seems right now, it looks like they're ready to roll him out again, which I'm not surprised. Your favorite giant Eli Manning is backing him. So this dude has some big backers. He's got... John Merritt, he's got Eli Manning. So you go out there, you get your wide receiver one. You're not doing it for Daniel Jones. You're doing it for the guy after Daniel Jones. Because you'd have to think that if Joe has common sense, he's planning for life after Daniel Jones. Like, There's no guarantee that he might not get another neck injury or he might not get hurt. And obviously we don't want him to get hurt because we know of the contract situation and the physical he needs to pass in March. And if you can't pass that, you gotta pay him 25 million extra or something like that. So then it'll be like 45, 47 million against the dead cap. But the, the common sense thing to do here is to take the wide receiver one. You, you lost out on getting the, one of the top three quarterbacks unless one magically falls, which it doesn't seem like they should. It seems like the top three teams need quarterbacks. And I don't think you should settle for J.J. McCarthy. And I really hope that the Vikings trade in front of us so we don't have to settle for J.J. McCarthy because I, I just don't see why we would take J.J. McCarthy over the clear pick, which is Malik Neighbors if he's available, or Rome, or even Marvin if he falls. Like, I don't know why Marvin would fall, but if he did, all of those wide receivers should be selected before J.J. There's no reason to not take any of these wide receivers and take J.J. McCarthy, who I, I can't see starting week one if we did draft him, but I can see any of these top three wide receivers starting week one. So I know some of y'all want to take J.J. McCarthy and gamble on round two and hope that Xavier is there, but what if he's not? Like, we've been without a wide receiver one prior to Daniel Jones. It's disgusting, guys. Let's, let's take care of that this year by taking them in the first round. So this next Giants fan is saying that he's coming around to drafting J.J. McCarthy because the offense looks so bad and he doesn't see how a wide receiver like Rome would make a difference with Daniel Jones at the quarterback position. And I just feel like this is coming from a place of watching last season where Daniel Jones was obviously thrown behind one of the worst offensive line and so everything looks crazy. So we forget about the previous year, right? We're going to call the flute because even though his best wide receiver was Richie James, and they went to the playoffs and, you know, we'll say, oh, some of the games they won were like low score, you know, like, like by a few points. Right. So a lot of people are saying all oh, those games could have went in either way. And then we wouldn't have Dana Jones. At the end of the day, he still threw for three thousand two hundred yards. You're, you guys wanted Justin Fields and he couldn't even break three K. So these are the same people. Again, you want Justin Fields who can't crack three K yards with DJ Moore. And then you're talking about you want to draft J.J. McCarthy, a game manager. And when you read all of the professionals, you know, articles about him, right? They'll say things like, oh, he needs to, you know, be behind of an established starter. And if you don't like Daniel Jones, you're like, we don't have a starter. So you're going to throw him out there year one, even though all the pros are saying that he, sh he should sit. 
whether it's the first few games or the first year. Most people are saying first year. They're literally saying that J.J. McCarthy can be good, but he needs to sit. And you want the Giants to draft him and start him, which is crazy to me, with no wide receiver one. Like, you guys are insane. You guys are asking to have a Daniel Jones part two. Because I really don't think that J.J. McCarthy is that good. I understand that he was rated higher than me coming into college. But a lot of times it's like, what did you do in college? You, he was a game manager in college. Daniel Jones is a game manager right now. So you're about to draft another game manager and not have weapons for him. Because Wandell and Hyatt aren't weapons. I don't care how much Hyatt is open. If that line is not functioning the way it needs to function. Good luck getting the ball to Hyatt. And if you don't have a wide receiver one, you're making his life harder. So you're better off having a wide receiver one at any quarterback in this draft throw to him than J.J. McCarthy. You're not drafting J.J. McCarthy and then gambling on a wide receiver one in the later rounds. Like, that's crazy to me. Just take the obvious pick, guys. So the next New York Giant fan said that we overpaid for Devin Singletary, which to me... I don't think we overpaid for him. Maybe, maybe you're looking at the length of the contract, because if I'm not mistaken, it's $5.5 million per year for three years. But when I go down the list of available running backs, unless you feel like you could pay Ezekiel Elliott less, or he will get paid less, which I'm hearing he might go to the Cowboys, I saw some fans saying that he might even come to the Giants and we'll have a committee, but I don't think we overpaid Devin Singletary, because if you look at the people paid below him, which one of them would be Austin Eckler, which I think Eckler is better than him, but Eckler has the injury history. And the same thing goes for a guy like Zach Moss. He, he has issues with staying healthy. So with that said, I think we paid the right amount for Devin Singletary. So I don't know if you're thinking that he should have been paid $3 million per year, but I don't know how realistic that is. I mean, Zeke did get that last year. From the Patriots but I don't know I, I don't know if we overpaid for uh, Devin Singletary I guess we have to wait to see how much Ezekiel Elliott gets paid then again it realistically doesn't matter because at the end of the day Devin's on this team because he played for the Buffalo Bills which means that he has an existing relationship with Debu and he's familiar with Debu's system so it made sense to sign him and if you look at the guys that are getting paid less than him they have an injury history so Signing, I think, is perfect. 5.5 million a year is great. He's 26 years old. All right, so this next comment posted a diagram which had three options. I would say that most people don't want option C. Nobody wants an offensive lineman at pick six. We're not saying that it's a terrible pick. Actually, more people are saying that option A would be a terrible pick because most people don't think that highly of J.J. McCarthy, and I agree because... Most people that want J.J. McCarthy feel like J.J. McCarthy is going to be good and they expect J.J. McCarthy to start week one, which is crazy to me. So if you're taking J.J. McCarthy, he's not going to start week one. So this graph doesn't really make sense because even if you were to start him week one, you would want Wandell to be his number one wide receiver. It's not going to work. That's that's not going to be a good number one. Like oh, Wandell is not a wide receiver one. So you go with option B, knowing that you're moving on from Daniel Jones. You guys are so dramatic with option B that in the graph, you're, you're, you're drawing that he's going to throw passes to a super talented wide receiver and he's not going to catch it. And the crazy thing about it is you couldn't say that before last season. And you were saying that last season because we have the worst offensive line in the league. But he was thrown to Richie James and Slayton. And I don't remember anybody saying that he was inaccurate. So if you go back two seasons where the offensive line was decent, you put a decent offensive line in front of him. He doesn't get hurt and he can stay in the pocket. What's so hard about throwing the ball to either Malik? In, in some crazy scenario, we get Marvin or even Rome. All he has to do is just stay in the pocket and throw it to him. He can't do that. That's fine. You put Drew Locke in. If Drew Locke can't do it, then you put the quarterback that we drafted that isn't J.J. McCarthy in. Like, it's not that big of a deal, guys, just to take a wide receiver one and not take out on J.J. McCarthy. You know what they projected J.J. McCarthy to be? They projected him to be Alex Smith. 
So they're saying that he's a game manager, and I agree. You, so you guys want to go from one game manager to the next game manager because this game manager played for a better college and is supposed to be better. That's a big L, guys. So one of the commenters said, with the six pick, the New York Giants select J.J. McCarthy, and he said, what would your reaction be? And a lot of the fans were not happy about this. They were saying that they don't want J.J. McCarthy because they know what it is with J.J. McCarthy. He's a game manager. He was asked not to throw because they had a good run game. A lot of people are saying, well, just because he was asked not to throw doesn't mean that he's not going to be a good quarterback. In my opinion, if you take J.J. McCarthy at pick six, you're doing the Daniel Jones thing all over again where people are telling you you have to take quarterback in the first round. You're, you're listening because people are making it seem like you have to take one there. Problem is, unlike Daniel Jones' draft, you actually have good quarterbacks that are outside of the first round. So you, you have quarterbacks that are quote unquote projects where you can sit them for a year or a few games, which you would have to do with J.J. McCarthy. Like no one thinks that if the Giants pick J.J. McCarthy, he needs to start week one, except for idiots. There are idiot fans that think that we should draft J.J. McCarthy and start him week one. And I'm just like, he's you know, he's not going to start week one. What's going to happen is if Jones is not ready, Drew Locke is going to start. And so you don't know when you're going to see J.J. McCarthy because you're not going to see him in the first few weeks. Like, why? Why would you throw him out there? And then when he stinks like Daniel Jones, you're in a Daniel Jones part two situation. Also, if you take J.J. McCarthy, I will be pretty upset, but I'll now have to see who we draft in the second round. And if it's not Xavier Leggett, or if we don't get Xavier in round three, it's not going to be a good draft for me. I don't care who else we draft after that. I'm not really, I'm just going to check out to be honest, because I'm going to be like, this doesn't make any sense. You have no wide receiver one, but you have a quarterback that's sitting behind Daniel Jones, who's going to be thrown to the same non wide receiver one receivers. These guys are really wide receiver threes. And so you missed out on the top quarterbacks and you're missing out on the top wide receivers. Like y'all don't understand how much of an L this is. You missed out on the top quarterbacks and you're screaming for a Daniel Jones replacement. And so you get an option to take JJ McCarthy, who was a game manager, just like your boy you're trying to replace now, or you take a top wide receiver who is the top three are better than the other receivers. I don't care if you think that there's some guy like a Leggett that could be a wide receiver one. You're, you're essentially gambling outside of the top three wide receivers. So why not do the short thing and just take the wide receiver that's top three in their class and then take your quarterback in another round or even next year's draft? Because remember, the, the, the quarterback contract once you draft somebody like a J.J. McCarthy, if you have to sit him for the first year or most of the first year, you've just lost one important year of that cheap contract for the rookie quarterbacks. And also, the, the quarterbacks drafted outside of the first round get paid less. So, doesn't make sense, guys, but I don't know. You J.J. McCarthy stands. I wish one of y'all would try to sell me on J.J. McCarthy. I don't, I don't think he's that good.